Over the course of my life, I've read all sorts of manga, such as Pluto, and that's it. But very rarely do I actually drop a manga. Now mind you, for the strange manga I find series, I typically read a couple of chapters and just leave it as that. But I'm talking about series that I actively read and then physically went, I have to stop reading this, I'm done with this. So, as voted by you guys, this week's video will be on manga that I've dropped. And I'm starting things off with a manga that I'm actually considering going back to, Gintama. This is definitely one I can see myself coming back to because there was a lot about it that I genuinely loved. Gintoki was a great protagonist, I loved his interactions with Kagura and Shinpachi. The entire supporting cast in general was really funny to follow. The manga was a comedy series first and foremost, but whenever it wanted to be serious, I think it did a really good job. The one arc that I remember is Yoshiwara and Flames, that's around the part I left off on. And it was stellar, it was really good, had great fight scenes, and a pretty good message behind it all. From what I've seen of the anime, it was really fun, the animation was fluid, the voice acting was top notch, and the music was honestly perfect. I'm wearing a Gintama shirt right now as I record. So why exactly did I drop this one? It really had to do with the humor and the pacing for me. It's been years since I last read slash watched Gintama, and I got into Gundam in that meantime, as well as Kamen Rider, so I think I would get a better appreciation of some of the jokes now, but back then it was not doing it for me. Some people have called this the family guy of Japan, which I don't really agree with, but a lot of the jokes do rely on referential humor, and when it references things like Japanese politics or history, that's where it loses me. I unfortunately am not Japanese, I am a South Asian that lives in New York, so I don't know much about Japanese political climate or culture, so a lot of these jokes end up being lost on me. And I mentioned the pacing too, because you would have serious arcs or serious chapters, followed by typical gag chapters, and the Monster of the Week formula ended up working great for Gintama. For those who don't know, the whole thing with Gintama is that Gintoki, Shinpachi, and Kagura all work for the little organization called the Yorzuya, which is basically odd jobs. They do odd jobs all around the town to interact with the crazy folk, and it's fun. It's a really fun series. But admittedly, sometimes the pacing would just kind of throw me off, and one day I just kind of stopped reading the manga, and I never really got back to it. I've also heard from my friends who completed the manga that the ending wasn't really the best, and that Gintoki behaved out of character and some say that it dragged on, and that's always unfortunate to hear. But out of all the manga I'm going to be talking about today, this is the one that I can easily say I will probably go back to. It also helps that conceptually Gintama is really funny, just the idea of aliens touching down on a Shinsengumi era Japan and just hanging out with humans, I love that, it's so goofy, it's so funny. Yeah, the more I talk about how why I dropped this, the more I'm like, huh, I kind of want to go back and give that another shot. I think I will, after I've read Naruto and Slam Dunk and, uh, Yatsuba. Next up is a manga that kind of pains me to say that I dropped, but to your eternity. For this one, I will go into spoilers, specifically stuff that the manga has touched on, not what the anime got up to, so just be warned. I could do an entire video on this manga and why it made me upset, in a bad way, but I'm gonna try to condense in here. This one was written by Yoshitoki Oima, and I bring it up because of the fact that I loved her previous manga, A Silent Voice. By all means, To Your Eternity should have been a prime Ash Core manga, and it was for a good while. It tells the story of the main character, Fushi, who is basically an alien entity from wherever, and he's immortal, basically. He's able to absorb people when they die. So people he befriend, people who he falls in love with, like platonically, he's able to transform into them and carry them on well after their deaths. It's a great visual metaphor as well as like an actual metaphor for life continuing well after you died. And it's made even more impactful when you find out that the mangaka even made this manga because her grandmother was dying of illness and she needed a way to cope. So you follow Fushi for hundreds of years and you get to meet all sorts of people across different time periods, cultures, etc. And it's wonderful, really. These people come, they go, they have hardships, they have, you know, all sorts of great things going on in their life as well as really low points. And Fushi, all the while, is not only befriending them but also trying to figure out what it means to even be human in the first place. There's also shadow demons called Knockers, which is the funniest name they ever could have given these things and I love them. So by all means, this should have been a prime Ashcore manga. 
It has a beautiful art style. The mood is somber and melancholic. It's really insightful and makes you reflect on your life and how you've lived and all the people who've come and gone. So why did I drop this one? Well, you see, it suffered from the same exact problem as Tokyo Revengers in the sense that it should have ended way, way sooner. In Tokyo Revengers defense, that manga is over. But to your eternity, it's still going, and by god, is it going. So you remember how the main theme with this manga is Fushi getting to know these people. They come, they go, you know, they die, and he just kind of, he can turn into them, but they're never really truly there. It's a somber and, you know, powerful statement of carrying people well after they died. Yeah, I mentioned that. But what if we threw all of that away, okay? It's modern day now, and Fushi is some sort of god. And also, he's able to bring back everyone who died in the prime of their life, and they're all happy, and they live in a house, and that's it. Yeah, that kind of, uh, <laughs> kind of takes away from the meaningful messages about death, huh? I am not a fan of the second part of To Your Eternity, as it's been called, and apparently there's gonna be a third part, which is set in the future, and I'm not gonna be reading that either. I think, had To Your Eternity ended in part one, uh, would have been a little weird, you know, a couple of unresolved things here and there. However, I still would have loved it a lot. But by the series continuing, by the series going to this weird present day arc, it just completely threw away everything that I even loved about the series to begin with. It's really unfortunate because like Tokyo Revengers, when I see people praise To Your Eternity on Twitter, it's because of the anime, and they have every reason to. The anime of both series have adapted the best parts of their respective manga, so I don't want to be the jerk that spoils everything for them. It really does suck, and I'm hoping that somehow Part 3, even though I'm not going to read it, ends up resolving all my complaints and ends up going back to the central theme of, you know, people die, you know, it happens. Who knows, maybe all these versions of everyone that Fushi has made, maybe they'll all die in part 3 and he's gonna realize I can't really bring anyone back. But as it stands, I don't see that happening and I don't see myself ever coming back to this series unless it does something of that nature. I'm not asking for it to be a manga full of despair and sadness, but I just kind of liked the manga beforehand where it was happy, it was jovial, with that air of somberness and sadness to it all. I mean, one of the characters is named Gugu, so I mean, come on, man. Next, we have a manga that I dropped like two days ago, Cypher Academy. Now, for better and for worse, I am a Monogatari fan. I've been one since 2015, and let me tell you, that's one of the most humbling things I've ever experienced in my life. I can't make fun of anyone for liking Attack on Titan or Pun Pun or anything, because I'm a Monogatari fan. I have no horse in this race. So I keep my mouth shut, and I just let people enjoy what they want. And I bring this up because Cypher Academy was written by the Monogatari creator, Misoi Isen. He has made a manga and jump before, Madaka Box, but I haven't read that one. Conceptually, this one is pretty fun. You have a main character who looks like this, and he goes to a school full of girls, and they all solve puzzles. Or ciphers, I guess is the best way to put it. The world is constantly at war, and there's cryptocurrency and all sorts of shenanigans going on. It's, uh, it's silly. The art itself is nice. It's done by Yuji Iwahara, and they do a really nice job. So, why exactly did I drop this one? Well, I think I'll just let these pages speak for themselves. It's like I'm reading Hunter x Hunter all over again. See, I can deal with Hunter x Hunter having walls of text because at this point, the manga has gone on for so long that I don't think a jump's gonna axe it. In the case of Cypher Academy, why do I have to expend so much time and brain power trying to read this when it could very well be cancelled next week? And it's not just me that dropped the manga, the official translator for Vid straight up dropped it. Kumara Siva Subramanian, God bless his soul, tried translating this and he did it for about 13 chapters and my god I can't imagine the ordeal. Like in Monogatari, Nisoi Isin loves word plays, he loves Japanese puns, he loves homophones, he loves all sorts of things of that nature. So trying to translate that on a weekly basis seems like absolute agony. 
I know that's Kumar's job, he's paid to translate from Japanese to English, but it's so difficult to translate in tens and all these tiny little word bubbles that Nisori loves to cram into every chapter. I read a bunch of the manga and jump, and they typically take me about 2-3 to three minutes per chapter, depending on the series and depending on what's happening that week. I also suffer from ADHD, so my focus tends to vary from time to time. So when you have a manga like this, where each chapter is comparable to the Lord of the Rings trilogy, it has my brain of fried, dude. Apparently the first volume did well enough to get a reprint, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's saved from being cancelled. Phantom Seer, one of my favorite Viz manga that got cancelled, was actually selling quite well and then they cancelled it for some reason. Yeah, no, Cypher Academy is just not for me. I do not have the brain capacity or the attention span for this, I'm sorry. And speaking of sorry, this next manga is a sorry mess of a series, oh my god. Remember last video when I talked about how I didn't like Pun Pun because it felt just too heavy in despair and suffering that it became comical? Yeah, I'd rather read Pun Pun over what this mess was. Boy's Abyss by Ryo Minenami is one of the funniest things I've ever read in my entire life. It starts off pretty promising, I'll be honest. You have the main character who is a good kid to say the least and he lives with his mom and his troubled grandma and they're not in the best situation. Our protagonist Reiji, he is a good kid and he's unable to leave his house despite you know wanting to due to having to take care of his family. When I first read this, I was like, oh, I can empathize, dude, I can understand where you're coming from, bro, don't even trip. But then, this manga goes into the abyss in the funniest way imaginable. You have this idol girl that pulls up, and she's like, hey, Reiji, I really like you a lot, why don't we just go die? And he's like, what? <laughs> Reiji sucks so much, he can't even get that right, and his teacher is like, oh, you poor thing, I'm gonna dedicate the rest of my life to you. And then you have Sakuko, who's like this cute little chubby girl who loses a lot of weight, and then fiends after Reiji. Then you have Gen, who was Reiji's childhood friend and also a bully and he has feelings for Reiji. And then you have Yuko, who is Reiji's mom and she has feelings for Reiji and I'm like, who, who wrote this? Everyone in this village has the hots for this wonder bread dude and he's not worth it, look at him. Then you got this guy, and I was like, oh, he's kind of cool, you know, Kosaku, he's, he's kind of neat. But no, he ends up being into children, he's a Monogatari fan, it's over, we're done. But then it doesn't matter because he has super cancer and it's like, bro, what? One of my favorite things about this manga is just looking at the comment section and seeing what people have to say. It just gets worse. This is character undevelopment. At first, I thought I lost track of the plot, but then I realized that the author lost it as well. I guess the Shonen no Abyss was the friends we made along the way, after all. I can't even say that people on social media praise this one because I've never seen anyone talk about this aside from my wife and one of our friends. Legit, nothing goes right in Reiji's life and it just became so funny to read day in and day out. I remember reading this manga while I was at the park, you know, I was taking a walk in the morning. And I got up to some part, I forget what it was, but I audibly went geez louise in public as I read this chapter because I couldn't believe the insanity that was unfolding. Everyone talks in riddles, and it's like, bro, shut up, just give it to me straight, just communicate, please. And everyone wants to get with this wet blanket of a human being, but that's not enough, too. They all want to die with him for some reason. It is so bizarre and just so funny, and I just dropped it because I just lost track of everything that was going on. I just couldn't take it anymore. It got a live-action adaptation in Japan, so I guess it's doing something right, but for me, I just could not stomach this one. It was too goofy, too all over the place, and trying way too hard to sound deep and inspirational when it ended up just being stupid. Apparently the author made an ecchi manga, so if you want to check that out, uh, you can go ahead and do that. But as it stands, I think that'll do it for this week's video, and I want to thank everyone who voted. I try to see the good in every manga I read, but there's some series where I read and I'm like, I can't do this. But next week we'll get back to talking about strange manga I find, so don't worry about that. Thank you guys for watching, and a special thank you to all my patrons. It's a Polaroid, Joe Papa 73 Sour Lolita, Borbulous Bunny, Real Sethery, Luce, Venti, Sea Crowns, Kiwi Kiwi, Sneaky the New Guy, V, Andrew, Audrey, Graystar, Sogon, Ongong, Amaterimasu, Logan, Sianaru, Jiva, and Chelsea. Thank you guys as always for your continued support. Uh, if you want to support me, my links are down below. 
and I'll see you guys next time. You take it easy.